All right, guys, let's get going here. Thanks for coming out. Grab a chair. We're excited. And uh, even though you could be doing a lot of other things out there on a beautiful night like tonight, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. So today we're going to talk about health and fitness strategies, part two. Part one is on the website, and you can see the previous video over there and uh, some of the study material for that one. So we're going to get a little bit more in depth. This is an area that I'm uh, passionate about. I've studied it for a lot of years. Lesson number 13 for launch class. Yay, technology's working. Okay, so, um, once again, I forgot my name tag. It's right here. <laughs> I'm Coach Al, and the other coaches have the same tag. And we're here for you. We're here voluntarily, and uh, we're here voluntarily, and we're here because we want to help young adults have some knowledge and some wisdom, some information that we didn't have when we were younger. So that you might have more, um, more successful families, careers, in this case, health and fitness. Uh, we just think it's important. And through that process, you will be able to help um, your kids and other people in Alberta. Quality of life for all Albertans should go up. It's part of our desire, part of our vision. So it's all about you today. We're here to help you. And so I'll ask questions, get involved in the small groups, invite other people, be part of the movement. So we often refer to this uh, seven areas diagram here, which is part of the introduction uh, foundation. What, wh where do we start? What are we gonna be covering over the course of these lessons for launch class? Well, there's seven areas of life. That's what we're going on is that premise, that basic foundation. Spiritual, family, social, financial, career, physical, mental. So today is physical. And uh, ideally, the concept is if we can have some uh, skill and some success and some knowledge and confidence in all seven areas, we will probably have a more successful life, a happier life, uh, more impact with our life, leave a you know, legacy, things like that. So that's the first concept. The other idea is we're really after if you think about what, what do we really want? It's kind of between our ears, it's kind of a feeling. We're really after lasting peace, happiness, confidence, fulfillment, if you think about it. You know, we want a new car, we want a new job, we want a new girlfriend, boyfriend, you name it, new clothes. Why do we want these things? We want them because we're ultimately, we want some lasting peace, happiness, confidence, fulfillment. We're trying to go a little bit deeper on these things and we're talking about if we don't have some success and some skill and some confidence in these seven areas, no matter what we do in terms of the cars and the clothes and the girlfriend and the job, we're not going to be, we're not going to have lasting peace, happiness, confidence, fulfillment. So that's, the, that's another premise of launch class. Another one is this, we have choices, you or me, God's pressing up on us in a positive way, encouraging us to go a certain positive direction. We all have that. Good conscience, bad conscience, right? And we have life squeezing down on us, putting pressure on us. We're, we're all under pressure, it's just part of life. We believe it's by design, how God created life. Because the pressure of life, God pushing up, life pushing us down, forces us to make choices, forces us to grow, essentially. But we have a choice. We can turn towards the problem and deal with it, or we can turn away and escape into fun, food, pleasure, shopping, etc., etc., wasting time. Those things aren't necessarily bad. It's just that if we spend all our time there, guess what? We'll go nowhere, and we will definitely not have lasting peace, happiness, confidence, fulfillment. So one of the concepts of launch class is we encourage you to turn right towards the problem because the Bible says, and we believe and we've experienced, God will meet us there. God will help us when we make that quality decision to move towards the problem, the goal, whatever it might be. Here we, we can have problems, we can have goals in every area of life, right? We, we uh, typically we have, this is what we call the corridor of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So we avoid it, usually, right? We're here to help and encourage everybody to go towards the problem. We'll be there for you, God is there for you, the people in your small group, you, you know, your friends will be there for you. Through that, we can have more success and we can have confidence going towards the problem, dealing with it. And so today we're gonna to talk about physical. And 
first part, first part of the program is large group like this, listening to me. The second half is just as important when we break into small groups, because in our small groups we can talk about what we've learned, we can talk about what we, frustrations, desires, in this case in the area of health and fitness, and we can help and encourage each other. Because uh, as, you'll, as you'll hear when I wrap up, I'll encourage you to talk to each other about what am I gonna do this week to move towards an improvement in this area of health and fitness. So that's the introduction. So last time, last uh, two weeks ago, we talked about how to start your own business, something you don't learn in school, another part of launch class, what are they not teaching us in school that we would really be helpful to learn as young adults, as people your age. How to start your own business. This week will be on health and fitness strategies, part two, like I said. Next week we'll talk about investing fundamentals. I happen to be an investment advisor, so that's another area that uh, we hope we can be helpful in. Okay, health and fitness fundamentals. Health and fitness, fitness and health, they go together, don't they? What's interesting, what I found interesting as I study these things, is uh, trying to be fit, trying to get exercise. Most people do it to try to get in shape, to lose a few pounds, right? That's what most people like to do. But what I found and what the literature talks about is it starts, there's body chemistry stuff that goes on when we get exercise. It makes us feel better. It actually affects our brain, makes us feel better. But it also, uh, our body's designed to move. So it cleanses our body, helps us to be healthy. So they go together is, is the bottom line there. They affect one another as well as our mental state and our feeling of happiness. So that's why we often hear about health and fitness. We talk about it together. We're gonna to end up talking about health more tonight than fitness, because fitness is not as complex as, as overall health. So what we eat, this is a key point, key point, what we eat is the most important part of the equation. And like we'll talk about in a lot of areas, in the seven areas of life, it's not as hard as what we think it is. That's a key thing to try to remember, it's not as hard as what we think it is. And so we're going to talk about some foundational information in the areas of health and fitness today. And one of the key things is really it's not as hard as what we think. Getting started is hard, making a change in our, in our habits and our um, diet and things are difficult. But once we get rolling, we feel good and it's easy. It's just that first change is difficult. So uh, what we eat is the most important part of the equation. Don't feel bad if you've had trouble in that area. Um, exercise can't overcome a poor diet. Unfortunately. Uh, another highlight, we have a hard time going it alone. That's what we've talked about. So launch class is uh, all about not going it alone. We talk about God. God wants to help us when we move towards our, our challenge, our goal, our problem. God is there. He really is. But we, as launch class, as coaches, as um, fellow students, we want to encourage and help each other. So we need God and we need others to help us in order to be successful. Uh, the food quality in our grocery stores has gone down over the years. So we need to educate ourselves. For example, one of my favorite websites, Nourishing Traditions, I, I've subscribed to that blog, and they talk about traditional diets of people from all over the world, but obviously food from the ground, food that's not refined, food that is fermented, for example, that's good for our gut, you might have heard that idea. Check out that website. It's a good one for high quality food and there's books you can order on there too. I have nothing to do with it. Just that's the best one I found for high quality food information. Many foods are addictive. Sugar, wheat, processed foods, for example. And that's one of the challenges. We know that sugar is addictive. We all have experienced that. Getting off it is difficult. Uh, I can tell you from personal experience, I will on another page, that I decided to cut way, way back on, on sugar and wheat because I had a sore knee and I felt better. Not only did my sore knee go away, but I feel fantastic now that I've really, really cut back on sugar and wheat. I don't miss it. That's the challenge. That's why it's easier than we think. Hard at first, but once you're, once you're two weeks down the road, you don't miss it nearly as much. You're not as, as, addictive, as addicted as you were. So we need appropriate strategies to overcome those addictions. So we'll talk about fitness first, and then we'll get more deeply into the health. Last time, in part one of Health and Fitness, we talked about this book, Body by Science by Doug McGuff, a research-based program for strength training, bodybuilding, and complete fitness in 12 minutes a week. That's hard to believe, isn't it? All the exercise you need in 
12 minutes a week. And most people would say, no, that can't be true. It doesn't make any sense to me. But he proves it. He's an emergency room doctor. And he's trained top athletes, and he trains seniors. They talk a lot about it in some of his videos and the book, about helping seniors to get rid of their walkers. Seniors that need walkers to get around, help seniors to ditch their walkers, which is a wonderful thing. So part of that program that he talks about is he talks about doing weights, machines mostly, but low, slow movement, really, really slow movement so you can't hurt yourself. And it's high intensity because you go until failure. You do it until you can't move. <laughs> but only 12 minutes a week. It's amazing. I've watched his video online. It really is amazing. But the key point about what he talks about is high intensity weight training, whether it be slow or, or, or normal, doesn't matter. But high intensity weight training is far, far better for us than what he calls long, slow cardio, which is going jogging or going on a treadmill for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And I've, I've experienced that myself. I believe that's true. Weights are more, if you have a choice, weights or cardio, weights are more important. Don't skip the weights. And partly because the long, slow cardio, which is, like I said, cycling or jogging or treadmill, your lower body gets some muscles get a workout, but your upper body doesn't. It's your upper body atrophies. But the main idea he talks about it there is long, slow cardio doesn't challenge our muscles enough. Our muscles need more of a challenge in order to be strong, in order for us to have all of our abilities as we get older. So especially for seniors, and as we get older, we need to do weight training because uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. And our abilities, we get disabled if our, our, our muscles atrophy too much. So that's his book. The second one is like the video that was in the uh, study material for class, High Intensity Interval Training, H-I-I-T. Very, very popular. That's why I included it. Um, so short, they call it burst training as well. It's another way of saying it. So you go hard for 20, 30 seconds, and then you take a break. Go hard for 20, 30 seconds, take a break. And you can do virtually anything in that regard. You could do it on a machine. These people in that video just did it with their own body weight, which was excellent. That's why I really like that video. You can have a really, really good workout just with your own physical body. And they had more challenging ways to do it, less challenging ways to do it. But you could do it just in the machines in the gym. You could do it going for a jog, doing a sprint, then coast, doing a sprint, then coast. I've done that. So that's another way of getting in great shape and having high energy for life. But once again, if you're doing something like sprints, um, now you have a risk of injury. So that's why that book, um, Body by Science, talks about how to do it without risk of injury so that anybody any age can do it. Uh, fourth point, any activity or sport that you enjoy is far better than nothing. So we're talking about the more advanced forms of fitness here, but frankly, the mo most important thing to remember is anything, virtually anything on a habitual basis. Go for a walk, um, any sport that you enjoy is far, far better than nothing. And I know I've been through that myself where you go for a period of a week or two without doing anything, and you go downhill fast, <laughs> right? If you don't use it, you lose it. Uh, there's an interesting paradox, and, and you may have heard this before, but a lot of people say, I'm low on energy, what should I do? I don't feel like going to the gym, I don't feel like going for a bike ride or a walk, right? Well, the paradox is if we're low on energy, we need to put out more energy in the form of exercise in order to get more energy because our bodies are so adaptable, our bodies will adapt, and our bodies will all of a sudden be, be have much more potential in the way of uh, energetic capacity if we exercise, if we challenge it. There it is again. If you don't use it, you lose it. So here's some personal examples. and um, This is kind of um, what I'm excited about telling you guys. And uh, But I want to say, as I said in my sixth point there, I'm not, I don't want to be critical of anybody because I'm going to talk about my experiences with some different doctors and whatnot. And the point here is not to be critical. The point here is awareness. Awareness of the different aspects of health uh, philosophy and where to get health advice. That's a big point of this class today. Without being critical, just becoming aware of all of our choices, some of our choices here. So I've had chronic sore knees three times in my life so far. The first time was probably 20, maybe even 25 years ago. Sitting for any length of time, my knees were sore. 
and it was very frustrating. And they were sore doing activities like hiking, they were sore. So I finally got in with the uh, surgeon, I think he was with the Stamps, I won't say his name, and uh, he's in Banff, I had to take a trip to Banff, and he said, well, you know, it's probably just calcium deposits under your kneecap. I could scrape your kneecap, take a couple millimeters off there if you want to, and you'd probably be okay. But it probably would grow back in a few years, you have sore knees again. So he said his advice was to just use less weight on the squats in the gym. That was his advice. Well, I wasn't satisfied with that because I, I, I just had a sense that no, our body should be able to have, be pain-free. This is a huge premise of mine personally. Our body should be able to operate pain-free. There's gotta be a way. There's gotta be a way. Nutrition, supplements, changing diet, you name it. So I did a bunch of research at that point in time and I discovered that a lot of us are deficient in magnesium, which causes our calcium to not be absorbed properly. So I tried different supplements. I landed on a calcium magnesium supplement. My knee pain went away. That was 20, 25 years ago. Then more recently, I would say about five, six years ago, I had sore knees again. Scratching my head, what's going on? I've been through this before, but I'm still taking my CalMag supplement, what's going on? So I got thinking, am I eating something that's causing inflammation? Because inflammation is the big bugaboo. Inflammation is the big problem um, that people have that causes their joints to you know, fall apart, knee, knee replacements and hip replacement, things like that. So I got thinking, what if I change in my diet? I was taking this mountain mix, you know, with the peanuts and the raisins and stuff to work for snacking. I thought it was a healthy snack, right? Mountain mix. Well, I thought, I wonder, I think I heard somewhere that maybe peanuts can cause inflammation in some people. So I cut out mountain mix, pain went away. No more mountain mix for Al. <laughs> so that was the second experience where I had sore knees. Went away with diet, change in diet. And then more recently, this is about two years ago, I was, uh, I wanted to train hard to compete in water skiing. And all of a sudden, one year, which was not this summer, two summers ago, I was training hard. I won't go into details trying to explain what that looks like, but all of a sudden I could not train as hard as I thought I, I should be able to train. I got home that night and I couldn't walk. My right knee was so sore. The next morning I couldn't walk. My right knee was so sore. Oh no, here I wanted to train hard so that next year, when I'm in a new age division, I want to compete, which was last year. Unfortunately, I couldn't compete because COVID canceled the tournament. So this year I've been competing for the first time. Anyway, so I went to see the doctor, the uh, arthroscopic surgeon, well, the, the knee specialist, and he said I could, uh, I thought I needed arthroscopic surgery. I thought there was something loose in my knee, you know, cartilage or something. And uh, so he said, I'm not gonna operate on you without an MRI. Okay, well, get me scheduled for an MRI then. 10 months later, unless you wanna pay $1,500 to get in there now. So, okay, what am I gonna do now? I could not train that year uh, without something. So all I could think about, I'm sure I was praying about it, what could I do to get rid of this knee pain? I decided to try cutting further back, as I alluded to earlier, further back on wheat and sugar. So I did, and sure enough, two months later, the knee pain was gone. It's been gone ever since. I just stayed, just cut back on wheat and sugar. That was my experience, three times knee pain, three times uh, a food or supplement solution. I recently had an abscess tooth, one of my front teeth here. An abscess tooth is when the root is inflamed, the root of a tooth is inflamed. And this one was abscessed such that it was, sorry to be gross, it was some pus was coming through the, uh, my gum at the root of one of my front teeth. And uh, this book helped me. Cure Tooth Decay. Remineralize cavities and repair your teeth naturally with good food. It's kind of a, it's become a very famous book by Ramil Nagel, N-A-G-E-L. Well, I had heard, my dentist said, all you can do is either pull the tooth or do a root canal. And I had heard, maybe this book, maybe somewhere else, the root canals aren't necessarily good for us. 
most of the time. This book says all the time, but most of the time, I heard. So I went online and I tried all kinds of different things for my abscess tooth. Some helped, some didn't. But four weeks later, I was pulling out my hair, I was ready to throw in the towel and fill the prescription for antibiotics that the dentist gave me. That would have got rid of the pain, but then I had to submit to a root canal. So that day, after four weeks, it was a Monday, and I was in pain and I was frustrated. I picked up this book. I wonder if there's anything in this book that talks about abscess teeth. Sure enough, there was. And he, he talks a lot about the Weston A. Price Foundation, which is, Weston A. Price is a famous dentist that traveled the world and studied the people of the world that had the best teeth. Turns out the people around the world that had the best teeth had never seen a dentist in their life. But they had high quality food just naturally in the ground where they live. So this book said that a lot of people are deficient in the fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. Um, and I thought, well, maybe A. And they said the best natural source of A is cod liver oil. And some people find that cod liver oil helps their teeth problems. So I bought some immediately, and that day I noticed the uh, abscess started to subside and the pain started going away. And that was uh, two weeks ago. It's now back, perfectly back to normal. So my dentist said, that tooth is dead. Nothing you can do about it. This book said otherwise. It turned out to be correct. I'm not criticizing my dentist about that because that just is the business that he's in. He doesn't have, he's not, he's not in the education business. <laughs> he's in the business of helping people get rid of their pain now, today. So that's that experience. Third experience, my dad had lung cancer. This is going back many years ago and because he's a smoker. And I was going with him to, to the Tom Baker Cancer Center every, every month for his radiation treatments. They take an x-ray, a chest x-ray. They'd show us, the oncologist would show us the x-ray. had white spots on his lungs. And he said to us, here's how this is gonna go. Those are gonna grow. You're not gonna be able to breathe. Go home, get your affairs in order. That's what he said. I said to the oncologist, is there any chance that vitamins or something might help? Should we try some? He said, try whatever you like. There's no evidence that helps, but try whatever you like. So I got him on some vitamins, some quality vitamins, a multivitamin E, I think. But there's this one particular one, this little red pill, called Pycnogenol. You can still buy it. And I think that's the one that made the difference. But three or four months later, we're in with that oncologist, Dan and I. And he said to us, you guys don't need to come back anymore. It had cleared up. My dad was off work for high blood pressure. His high blood pressure was gone. His breathing was normal. His chest x-ray was clear. You guys don't have to come back anymore. So I said to the oncologist, now you said this is extremely rare that this kind of thing would happen, this kind of reversal of lung cancer. Is there anybody here at Tom Baker Cancer Center that would like to do some research on what dad did? Study what dad did might help somebody. He said, no, there's no money for it. He wasn't interested whatsoever. I'm not criticizing him. That's just the business he was part of. They're not part of, or he wasn't interested in, I guess, what dad did. It just didn't fit with their business model. Um, that was that experience. I told that story to a naturopath a couple years ago. He told me a story. He said, I got one kind of like that. So he told me a story. He said that a, a patient came to him and he said that the, uh, the colon clinic in Calgary, and there's only one, I'm not gonna say the name of it, wants to remove his colon because it was really inflamed. I mean, he's having digestive issues and pain, right? Not cancer, at least not they didn't have any proof that he had cancer at this point, but it was so inflamed, they said, cancer is just a matter of time, so we should remove your colon. So he went to this naturopath who I was talking to, and he said, I'm desperate. I don't want them to take my colon. Is there anything I can do? So this naturopath, I'm not gonna say his name, told this guy, and he told me, he said, I talked very strong, was stronger than I usually would, because this was a desperate situation. He told him, if you follow my instructions exactly to the letter, you might be able to save your colon. So he did. 
Three weeks later, he had a colonoscopy, 100% clear, 100% clear. So he asked the colon clinic doctors, anybody here that wants to know what I did? Might help somebody? No, nope. not interested. It's not part of their business. I tell you that just to be aware. This is an important awareness of understanding the different types of medical advice that we can get, different businesses that they are, that the business models that they're running. Not to be criti critical of any of them. That's not the point here. That's far beyond the scope of what we want to talk about today. I saw a different naturopath for the first time three weeks ago. And uh, he hadn't met me, I had met him. One of the first things I asked him, just kind of small talk, jokingly, I asked him if he got the COVID vaccine. He didn't bother with any uh, um, political correctness. He just said, hell no. <laughs> and that was the last we talked about. We didn't talk about that subject anymore. That's just what he said, just information. Just information, that particular naturopath that was his response. So like I said, not to be critical, but the idea here is awareness, education, and a couple of biblical passages that apply. And I highlighted the one that means a lot to me, that I've memorized, that I've tried to apply. And that's, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, prove all things, hold fast to the good. Hold fast to that which is good, I think some translations say. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. The Apostle Paul wrote that. The Apostle Paul wrote most of the New Testament in the Bible. So here's what most people say, the number one evangelist in the history of the world telling his audience, don't take my word for it, do your own research. And of course I would say the same thing to you, don't take my word for it, do your own research. The Bible tells us, do your own research, don't take anybody's word for it. So what does that look like, prove all things? What it looks like to me, is when you have two different opinions that you're wrestling with. Somebody wants you to do this, somebody wants you to do that. Um, this career, that career, this, <laughs> this spouse, that spouse. In this case, this doctor's advice, that doctor's advice. What should you do? Well, the Bible says prove all things. What I think that looks like is go back and forth between the two opinions, ask, asking questions prayerfully because the reason I say prayerfully is because the Bible also says in James 1 5 God gives wisdom generously to all who ask so if you ask for wisdom and you go back and forth asking questions in my experience you will find peace you will find clarity through that process I've done it many many times I do it all the time matter of fact that last one I ask God for wisdom pretty much every day in one way or another and he's never let me down one of the Bible's best promises. God gives wisdom generously to all who ask. God loves to, add, to give us ideas and wisdom if we ask. That proves that he's real, proves that he loves us, things like that. Okay, so let's move on here. Oh, my little pointer must have timed out. Okay, I gotta do it manually. There we go. Choices regarding health advisors. We won't spend as much time on this one. This is just information that I believe is true, and the, uh, one of the uh, links in the study material before this class talked about that, different kinds of doctors. That was the only source I could find that actually talked about that subject. So the first three are the top, the top tier of medical advice. There's medical doctors, which we've all dealt with. Those are called allop allopathic doctors. Those are MDs. They have seven years of, uh, minimum seven years of post-secondary education. There's naturopathic doctors, which are called NDs. They have seven years of post-secondary as well. And then there are traditional Chinese medicine doctors, TCMDs. They also have seven years of post-secondary. So as far as I understand it, they are in the top tier of health advice, health advisors, but they're different. The fourth point I made there is homeopaths, herbalists, and nutritionists. Those require less education than, than the top three. Uh, I would suggest that naturopaths, which is the second category, uh, covers the same ground as homeopaths, herbalists, and nutritionists. 
as far as I understand, for the most part. Traditional Chinese medicine is mostly herbs and acupuncture. It's been around thousands of years, so it's well proven. I'm not gonna go into any more detail. I don't wanna get myself in trouble and make any errors, but the point here is that there's lots of different schools of thought. The next category would be chiropractors and dentists. Chiropractors, you know, they straighten out your back and your spine and, and your joints and whatnot. Sometimes they get into nutrition, sometimes they get into exercise. They can do lots of different things. Dentists, we talked about dentists. So the main point here is given a certain set of symptoms, all of these different types of health practitioners will have various approaches to dealing with those symptoms. That's the key point. Which means it's not necessary, it's not necessarily this guy or that guy is right. It's get second and third opinions, like we talked about. First Thessalonians 5.21, prove all things. Go back and forth between your opinions prayerfully and ask questions. It's those questions. He says this, what do you say? Oh, okay. Well, he said this, what do you say? Oh, and do it in a nice way. But asking questions, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to discern what's the difference here and make some good choices for yourself. I've been through that. I just went through it with, with the dentist, like I told you about. Uh, okay, that's that one. That's one of the key things we wanted to get across to be aware of all the different types of health advisors. So I think this is the, uh, yeah, this is the last slide before we go into the small groups. Key health and fitness principles, for the most part, we get to decide. All of the diseases that, co that people die from these days, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, stroke, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, you name it. Those are lifestyle related diseases. I can say that with confidence. Lots and lots of doctors will tell you that. In other words, we get to decide how long we live and with what quality. That's the good news. The bad news is we can't, the responsibility is ours. We can't you know, give it to somebody else. We can't blame our doctor. We get to decide how long we live and with quality. Another Bible quote, Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Perish is kind of like, how do you perish? Well, if you can't walk, that's perishing. If you die of a heart attack at age 40, well, that, that's certainly perishing. Uh, if you can't have kids because you're not healthy, sorry to say it that way, but we, ex I experienced that firsthand. We needed to up our health in order to get pregnant. And uh, along with the higher incidence of heart disease and cancer and diabetes these days, there's higher incidence of infertility as well. So, knowledge, that's what health, that's what Launch Class is about. Hopefully we're giving you some foundation you can go and build from here. Success is easier than you think. I've already talked talk about that idea. Start small, change one eating or exercise habit at a time to build momentum. You get confidence, you get excited. You get, you're moving in the right direction. It'll be much easier to build. So don't try to do it all in one week because you'll, you'll, you'll probably crash and burn, right? And then ask God and others for help because others really do want to help and God for, for sure. Your body is a gift from God, designed to be healthy and fit for 100 plus years. Lots of literature on that, on that statement right there. Given the right inputs, we've talked about that, the right inputs of food, exercise, health advice. So your body is a gift from God, designed to be healthy and fit. What you do with it to help others is your gift back to Him. That's what launch class is about. We want to help build others up so that you can go out there and help more people and improve the quality of life for all Albertans. You can do it. The bottom line is you can do it. So we're gonna get in small groups here and take turns sharing with each other what some of what you learned about, what you liked about today's lesson. Most importantly, talk about your struggles, talk about your goals, talk about your dreams in the area of health and fitness, but tell each other, pick something that you're going to do this week. Tell each other for the next two weeks what you're going to do because now that's accountability. Now you're more likely to do it if you speak it and you can encourage one another. So valuable, these small groups, because uh, this is our, our support network, right? Next time we get together, you can ask each other, how'd you do, how'd you do? Yeah, we're gonna celebrate, right? That's what we wanna be doing. Okay, so can you think of anyone else who might benefit from this message? Share it with them. Join Launch Class Mission and to improve our society, Grow yourself and tell others about Launch Class. Next week's lesson will be in two weeks. Check the uh, check the website. Subscribe to the blog for updates. 
Thank you very much, guys. Let's break for the second part. Take care.